I'm really curious also, I really want to hear your war stories, like the projects that you have uh, implemented, this, uh, what you earlier spoke about, this VDC process, and what kind of uh, projects have you done with those, and what kind of, like, um, uh, damn, I forgot the English name, like notices, <laughs> like uh, details, uh, like, how to say, the victory moment, so to say. Have you seen those uh, projects? Uh, you mean the week, the week one? You you mean like you want to hear what, when things went wrong, or? Oh uh, well, yeah, both. Like, uh, what kind of like uh, things that should have put more details or more attention to fix it, and then what kind of revelations have you had uh, during those projects? Yeah. So. Gosh, I'm thinking back to, it was three years ago, I was working on a project. Uh, it was a community center, um, kind of like a gymnasium, right? It had a, a big basketball court and some weightlifting rooms, things like that. Um, so <clears throat> one of the things that we noticed on that project was, um, you know, so, well, let me back up a little bit again. So traditionally, like in a construction project, you know, you have different scopes of work that are clearly delineated and split up between different parties that are supplying the material. So, you know, we were doing the mass timber scope of work, which includes all of the wood beams and columns and panels. And then there's another scope of work for the steel connection. And so we we had contracted out with another party to do the steel detailing connections and then we were doing the wood detailing. Well, we found that the the level of error was just too high because we were we were modeling our wood and then creating chop drawings, and then somebody else was modeling the steel and creating chop drawings, and then the way that we were quality controlling those two models was through paper. So the project <laughs> manager, the project manager was looking at the drawing of the wood and looking at the drawing of the steel, and then saying, "Oh yeah, these these work. These fit together." Well, that didn't work because <laughs> we would manufacture the wood and they would manufacture the steel and it just didn't match. So then we decided, well, we need to combine the activities. So if we're if we're producing anything that's interacting with another piece, like, like if we're producing the wood and it's dependent on the steel, we need to model the wood and the steel and create the drawings from one model. We can't have two models and create drawings from each model and then compare the drawings. That takes too long and it's inefficient. So we're going to control that. that we're going to absorb the steel scope of work within the wood scope of work. We're going, to, we're going to produce all that. And then we're going to contract with the steel supplier so that if, if the steel supplier makes something wrong, we have the ultimate say over whether or not they need to remake that deal or not. Because the old way of working was that the, the steel supplier to just send whatever they wanted, and there was nobody that could reject the material because we didn't have the right contract. So I think that was the biggest lesson learned was um, you need to absorb, you know, I think I think contractors need to start absorbing more scope because, you know, it was, you know, traditionally, um, you know, if you look way, way back in time, the, the builder, there was a master builder, right? And they would do everything. They controlled everything. Well, as we move through history, you know, that becomes more and more split up. And, and that's where you get a contractor, right? So a contractor takes a construction project and divides it up into hundreds of different scopes of work and then gets, you know, 50 or so different uh, subcontractors to sign a contract. And then those subcontractors sign contracts with material suppliers. And then the material supplier might sign a contract with the detailer, <laughs> which is a model. Well, it's much more efficient if the contractor absorbs the scope of work and then contracts with their material supplier and just controls that process. And I think BIM and VDNC is making that easier. So that was a big lesson learned from, from that project is just, yeah, if you really want to control quality, you need to just do it. You know, if, if you're doing one scope that's dependent on another scope of work, you can use BIM and VDNC tools absorb that information and ensure quality that way. 
Definitely. That's uh, the visualization and uh, the combination models, like having different uh, expertise to put all. Like I think uh, uh, BIM uh, 360 does that, right? Like there's many yeah. different designers and they all input their or export their materials in one place and then you can see how they fit together. Right, yeah, and I think we need to move away from <clears throat> we need to move away from the shop drawing where you see the source material and and start viewing the model as the source material and the drawings are just an export from the model. Right. So if, if you're able to visualize the model and coordinate the model in a virtual space, it becomes a much more simple process to approve the drawings because you know that the drawings are coming from the model and you can trust the model. So I think that's another thing we're going to see in the future is, is companies moving away from the, the, the two-dimensional documents. Not that those will ever go away because they, they're needed. They're needed contractually, right? It's, it's, it's more of a legal obligation, right? You, you submit something, it's approved. Yeah. Whatever. Need but, to have something to rubber stamp. <laughs> right, right. Because you can't rubber stamp a model. At least not yet. So, but if you know that if you know that the model is correct, Know that the drawings are correct. Yeah, because definitely. The drawings, the drawings are just an export from the model.